Um, I'm Mark Chris from Memorial Sloan Kettering. And I'd like to speak today about the use of chemotherapy with a targeted therapy, uh, particularly in patients with EGFR uh, and uh, ALK disease. And what I'd like to do is compare and contrast the uh, thoughts about using chemotherapy in the uh, post-operative uh, adjuvant setting versus in, in the stage four setting. And I think the uh, clearest uh, answer is in patients in the adjuvant setting. Please remember there that after a curative surgery, uh, the goal of which exactly was that, to cure the patient, uh, we are, again, using systemic therapies to enhance the chance of cure. And in that case, uh, I think we need to pull out all the stops to use whatever therapies we have to increase the chance of cure. And the first treatment that's been proven to improve that chance of cure is chemotherapy. I have to say that recently we did a survey among my uh, practice group, and uh, the number of people was uh, 20. And I would say that all 20 people in patients that had a completely resected uh, tumor in somebody with an EGFR mutation said that they would administer chemotherapy in addition to osimertinib. I know in the clinical trial, not all the patients receive chemotherapy, but I think it's the feeling of at least my practice group that everybody would get chemotherapy with osimertinib if they had an EGFR mutant cancer. Now, with the ALK uh, rearranged cancers, um, it's newer data, but again, despite the fact in this case that the clinical trial did not give chemotherapy to every patient, in fact, the randomization in the clinical trial was uh, electinib uh, versus uh, uh, no uh, additional, uh, no chemotherapy, uh, everyone would also give chemotherapy. Again, chemotherapy has been proven to improve the chance of survival, and in that setting, we would always give chemotherapy. Again, the balance between benefit and risk when it comes to cure, I think uh, patients would much take, prefer to take on uh, risk if the therapy could help lead to cure. And I think that's a conversation, obviously, you have to have with the patient, but also I think physicians feel very strongly about recommending chemotherapy in that setting. I know the clinical trial didn't do that, but at least my practice group um, uh, 18 out of the 20 people said they would give chemotherapy. What about in the stage four setting? There's been a lot of talk recently about the uh, use of chemotherapy with osimertinib as initial therapy. And uh, I will have to say that in my practice group, a decided minority of patients, only about a quarter, a minority of doctors rather, recommend the combination of chemotherapy and osimertinib up front. Um, now, why is that? Well, I think one thought is that because at the, today the magnitude of benefit is 10 months in progression-free survival, many people feel that that is an uh, inadequate number to recommend chemotherapy to every patient. I respectfully disagree with that. I think for uh, allowing patients to remain disease-free is the, all, the most important thing short of cure. Uh, and uh, I believe that with judicious uh, administration of chemotherapy, you can uh, prop, properly balance the uh, benefits versus the risk. Please remember that the vast majority of toxicity, toxicities that were seen in that stage four setting were, I will call the paper toxicities, uh, changes in hematologic parameters, for example. Uh, however, um, again, it's balancing risk and, and, and benefit. Now, how, I always recommend chemotherapy to, to patients getting osimertinib uh, up front. I've done that for uh, many years now. And I think you need to have a discussion with the patient, benefit versus risks. Uh, you need to be very, very careful about assessing uh, risk and any sort of uh, uh, toxicity that would be lifestyle disrupted needs to be either ameliorated or taken into account about continuing the regimen. Um, and 
Uh, uh, lastly, you have to be ready to modify the regimen and, and pay close attention to the patient and, and, and really have that uh, discussion over and over again. Now, that said, I am in the minority in my practice group. Most people are not giving chemotherapy with osimertinib. I routinely recommend it. I do my best to very carefully make sure the patient understands the risk. I have to work harder to make sure that the toxicities are ameliorated to the best ability possible, and we continually re-address uh, it. And just to reiterate again, when it comes to cure, there is a much greater tolerability by both patients and physicians alike to accept uh, ad, uh, adverse events, adverse uh, events for the increased chance of cure. Less so in a more uh, nuanced discussion in, in the setting of advanced cancer where cure is not the goal of therapy. However, even there, you need to uh, have a clear discussion with patients and decide benefit versus risk and a constant reassessment uh, as things go forward. Um, so things are not cut and dried uh, in the uh, current situation. There's a differences in opinion, uh, and I urge you to uh, think about how you, you feel about this and, and also, of course, uh, discuss things with patients and come up with the best choice for each individual patient. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation, and uh, I urge you to try to make the best decisions. Don't throw out chemotherapy because it, what it is, make sure it's the right thing or not for your patient.